Welcome to Blood of the Void, a live play Klingon TTRPG campaign powered by Modifius. I am Elisa Pearl, your game master, and we have some announcements to make tonight. Before I introduce my cast to you, I want to tell you a few things. So our sponsor, Modifius, has a slew of new exciting projects that have been dropping. There's a new Shackleton Expanse setting book. There's a tricorder set player's guide and game master guide. So tons of new options for your ongoing or your new to start Star Trek Adventures games, whether it's Starfleet game or Klingon game like we're playing. So definitely go to modifius.com and check out all of those new product drops. Um, you also are going to want to follow Blood at, uh, at Blood Void RPG on Twitter and Instagram and become a stream punks patron. We are a group of friends and and associates who are playing TTRPG games for the fun of it and also because we're obsessed and a little bit addicted to it. So if you'd like to support us and um, our future endeavors, which we will be announcing very soon, we have some new announcements of new content coming, uh, join our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash streampunksrpg. And now I'd love for my cast to introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm just going to go left to right on my screen. Actually, I can see our little screen that everyone else can see, so I'll go by that. Uh, in the upper left corner, we have Aki. Who are you playing, and what are you doing in the world? Hi, everyone. I am Aki. Um, I play Lieutenant Dewa, uh, who is uh, the engineer of the ISS uh, IKS Borku, and uh, who has been carrying around a deep, dark secret for most of their time on the ship. That has now only been revealed to one crew member. Uh, we'll see if more people find out today or next next time. Who knows? Um, what I'm doing out in the world. Uh, there are a couple of interesting things that are on the horizon that are getting close to being ready to announce. Uh, and I'm very excited to, to let y'all know about them. Uh, one thing you can look forward to is next week. Believe it. Oh, actually, sorry. Not next week. This week on Thursday. Uh, unless I hear otherwise, uh, Bonds Before Time is going to be premiering uh, its first season. Uh, I believe that'll be on Thursdays at 7 o'clock um, at Kira. Is it 858? Yeah, Kira 858. Twitch.tv slash Kira 858. Is that uh, the uh, Mage campaign? Yes, that's the Mage the Ascension campaign that I'm doing, uh, uh, that I'm joining. So uh, you're, you're going to see me see me playing a very interesting character. Um, I'm pretty excited. And that, yeah, that's this this Thursday at 7 p.m. at Kira 858. So. How exciting. Yeah. Great, thank you. thank you. Jade, who are you playing and what are you up to in the world? Oh yeah, hey, I'm Jade. I play Commander Edaj, who is a captain of the IKS Borku and uh, like the, the auntie to these, this mishmash of people here taking care of everything. Uh, I believe I'm going to battle people and just stab them. I'm usually a doctor, so I put you together, but I can take you apart. So that's currently my role uh, in this whole campaign. And also the commanding officer of the ship. Yeah. Did the you one. say that already? I didn't, sorry. Uh, kind, kind of. <laughs> kind of. I don't, you to un I don't want you to undersell what you Oh, do. no. I'm very important and very <laughs> yes. cool. Yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> for myself, um, you can look forward to my very large hair tonight. I don't know if you can see, but it's very large. Um, put in a lot of effort for that. And, uh, you know, just uh, you might see me on varying TV or streaming networks. <laughs> Where's Waldo? Come find me. That's all I have to say. Pew! Wonderful. Thank you, Jade. And Philip, who are you playing? What are you up to in the world? What's up, guys? I'm Philip. Uh, I play Omek. I'm the science officer because, uh, look, I have glasses. So that, you know, mm -hmm. makes it official. Klingon uh, nerds exist. Klingon nerds are important. Yes. Um, my character has daddy issues. I guess, uh, you know, art imitates life. So, you know. I'm just here to play that and like, let's see what's going on, you know? Yeah. But not not daddy issues where like I'm on the pole or anything like that. <laughs> this Klingon stays away from the pole. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, not that there's say, anything the wrong with it as well. The pole is, a, is an The pole's fine. Profession. The pole is completely <laughs> fine. 
I just Listen, you, know, you just stop trying to who, brag to show abs. Who among us, who among us would actually brag. be mad at seeing Omek on the pole? Like none of us. I I can speak for us all. He got just the training the physics of how to stay up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And uh, as far as what I'm up to, just you know, hanging out. You could follow me on Instagram, uh, Philip Jean Marie. See what I'm up to. That's it. Fantastic. Thank you. And Quincy, who are you uh, playing? Hi, what are you doing? Wrong? Quincy Sir Smith. I play Lieutenant Ramyan, a helm officer, and I talk like this. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he's helm officer and he makes a ship fly around and otherwise he does politicky things and uh, quotes Shakespeare a lot. Um, and in real life, I, uh, I'll, I'll do three things in order of um, like super serious to the most fun. Uh, right now, my day job right now is uh, I am an audio journalist. So we just did uh, launch a new season of a show called A Better Life, which examines how immigrant and immigrant communities are affected uh, by the pandemic and how the pandemic has affected their relationship to being here in the US. We just launched, you can find more at abetterlifepodcast.com um, or you can find it on your podcast app under feet in the number two worlds, which is the company that produces this. Um, Secondly, is my own uh, perennial Asian Americana uh, is um, a podcast about Asian American culture and history. Uh, and I know a few of the, the folks watching uh, do listen because they tweet me about it. So uh, I've been on break from that a little bit to work on the job podcast. But uh, all the all 18 ish episodes are uh, evergreen. So you can listen to one through 18 and they still will be great. They're not like about stuff that's current events um, and more are coming on the way. And finally, the most fun thing maybe for some folks is I uh, am voicing in a couple episodes of both Disney's Amphibia and Disney's the new show, The Ghost and Molly McGee this season. Um, I know the Disney's Amphibia episode, I think is coming out on uh, the 23rd of this month. The um, Ghost and Molly McGee episode, uh, we were still recording stuff as of last week, so I don't know when that episode will come out. But the show's really cute. Uh, both shows feature a Thai American uh like young woman protagonist um and that's super fun uh and they're both just really fun shows uh amphibia is in its third season now so it's a lot of like backstory about frog people and stuff um that i won't get into here because it's a lot to get into but uh watch it it's on uh a, a tiny company's channel disney i believe uh is, is the tiny company <laughs> disney channel and then i think it's on disney plus soon uh, a few episodes that come out before they put them up but never yes, heard please of watch them. those never heard of them who are who's that Where's that? Coming? I don't know. It's some it's some mustached animation dude, I guess. It, uh, he made it. a little top. Oh, I'm a, I'm supposed to talk? Yes. Oh, um, I am the security officer Kotar Ayana. You know, uh I just be killing folks, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. in outer space, people gotta die. People, mm -hmm. aliens, um, beings of all sorts, and you know, um, when they step up, they get done up. Um, and in real life, you know, I'm pretty chill dude. Um, <laughs> I write uh, for TV, uh, watch Fox Animated Sundays. Uh, you'll see some stuff I've been on. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. My Instagram is uh, Dreddens. Just really, you know, making fun of the sad social situations that happen in life. But that's about it. <laughs> I thought it was Dr. Eddins this whole time. Yeah, and a lot of people do. And, but, you know, I did not go to school to get a doctorate. So I'm not out here, you know, <laughs> stolen valoring doctorhood. <laughs> Just, oh. I have dreads. And, yeah, there we oh go. God. Well, I learned something new today about you, Chris. You PhD go. is pretty happy dude, right? Like. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, great. And I am Aliza Pearl and I'm your game master today. I have a lot of stuff. I don't know, a million streaming things that I'm doing in TTRPGs. You can find me at Aliza Pearl on Twitter and Instagram. And with that, if there's nothing else we need to cover, let's start our Klingon adventure.
we left off in a very tense moment on several different levels for our fearless IKS Borku crew. To give you a recap of last episode, the crew of the IKS Borku set sail from Konosh and arrived at Forseth, a small planetoid that is in the next system over that is the site of a mining facility run by locals, but being overseen by a crew of Klingons. The Klingons are led by a commander named Dakor that this crew has had some encounters with already. And to sum things up, encounters with Dakor and his first officer, Polk, have led the crew to believe that they are untrustworthy and un untrustworthy and unhonorable Klingons. You all found out from Dakoth, a friendly Klingon elder therapist who traveled here almost by chance with Dagor and his crew. He is a friend of Ra'al, who is Ra'amyan, Quincy's character's in friend on the High Council. Ra'al is also the same person who said to meet with Dakoth, although under his secret name. And she also gave you the heads up, Ra'amyan, that she believed one of the High Council members was invading this territory where Vorseth is and the mines for ill-gotten reasons and ill-gotten gains. Last session, you also had a moment with Polk, Dagor's first officer, where I believe it was Jade Edaj who grabbed her digital pad from her hands and had your officers scan it and do some science on it to see why, uh, first of all, it wasn't working and you felt that there were some secrets being kept from you. You found out that it had been fried and hacked somehow and it wasn't working properly, which begs the question, why was Polk pretending that it was working? Or why, was, why wasn't any of this brought to you up front? So you sent your engineer, Doa, up to the IKS Raga, Dagor and Polk's ship, to do some fixes. And while that was while that was happening up on the ship, you then realized you needed to possibly stop this crew from being able to shoot or leave. And so, Edaj, you sent a message up to Dua saying disable the ship secretly. And Dua, after an extended task, a series of roles, was able to do that successfully without them noticing with some assistance from our security officer. And so in those last moments of the last session, a few things happened. Edaj, with some inspiration and motivation from Dagoth, you and your senior officers, minus two of them, went over to Dagor's hut on planet side on Vorseth to challenge him because of these ills and wrongs you have figured out. You were met with about a dozen of his officers outside his hut and he came out also ready for a fight. Up on the ship, the Raga, Dua having freshly disabled that ship so that they could not leave or shoot, Dua then instructed with permission from their commanding officer, instructed Kotar to take command of the Raga in the name of the IKS Borku and the Klingon Empire. And so, Kotar, you declared that you're taking over this ship to the protestations of the first officer, Polk. And now you stand face to face with her, with her mechleth in hand, ready for a battle. And the final thing that happened, back on the planet for Seth, with Adaj standing there, Omek and Ra'amyan flanking her. 12 officers standing outside the hut, plus Commander Dagor. Dagor looks up, points up to the sky and says, you may be ready for a fight, but it's likely you who will leave here dead. And when you follow his point, his gaze up to the sky, you see two unmarked Klingon ships decloaking in orbit. That's where we'll pick up in this session. Edaj, our commanding officer. 
you know that besides these two uncloaked ships in orbit, there's also the IKS Raga in orbit with two of your senior officers on it who have disabled it. You know that the Borku itself is in orbit and has a full bridge crew at your command still that you can communicate with. And then these two unmarked ships. What would you like to do? And feel free to consult with your senior officers who are present. I mean, if the last thing he said was like, look up, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up and then just start to, because I always have my large coat on me. I'm just gonna start feeling around and take out a dick tock and start just sort of like twirling it around my hand and just say, huh. And what would be the meaning of two ships in orbit to me when we're all part of a glorious Klingon empire? Right, Dago? What 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 do you think is happening, Dago? Like what is going on? And I kind of look at all the 12 people flanking him in row. Because we're all part of the Klingon Empire, are we not? You hear muffled chuckles from some of the officers flanking Dagor. And he himself smirks at you. He, holding a mechleth in hand, carefully removes the top vest of his Klingon armor just for a second to turn and show you that the back has the symbol of the Rane crime family, a snake and cross swords. I'm not sure which empire you fight for, mm -hmm. but in this part of space, I fight for this empire. And he puts his armor back on. And so that's where your loyalty lies. Is that where everyone else's loyalty lies as well to this one family? The other officers who now you realize aren't really officers, uh, they look at you and you get your answer just in the intensity of their glare. Hmm. All right. Let me ask you then. Have you forsworn everything that is Klingon about you? One of the other officers speaks up and says, the KDF never looked out for me or my family. The Rane have. They are as Klingon as Kalesh himself. <gasps> You look at things on too small of a scale. The world is more grandiose than this vision of what you and your family have been through. Do you not know the history of your people? If you choose only to follow what is current in this time, you will lose out on the glory that has been promised to you in all of your family stories. And that is fine. If you choose that path, I offer you an alternate to follow the glory of what is true. Yes, we've all been hurt by the Klingon council. Little men sitting up on big chairs, right? We are the ones who are here fighting for us and our people. But I fight for our people, not just the selfishness of my own. So all I ask of you is that you respect the Klingon custom that we have all known for so, so long. And at least let us battle one-on-one. -on -one. Dagor, you and me taking on this battle together to the death. Dagor shifts in his stance, kind of squaring off his shoulders more and says, oh, we will battle. <laughs> that is for certain. As for your other customs, 
I am only held by the law of the land that we are in now. And that law is the Rane law. And with that, he takes his free hand, hits his communicator on his wrist, and says, fire. Cutting to up above in space, you all see the two battleships start to make a, a fence, uh, attack formation around the IKS Borku. And one of them fires at the IKS Borku. So I will roll for that. And who is going to be um, crewing just in our game here at our table? Who's going to be in charge of the ship? Rolling for the ship. Just so uh, I, I think I'm rolling for the ship. Great. So, yeah. Okay. And for us, uh, what do we be holding, rolling for? So actually, I'm going to roll first. Mm -hmm. And they're just getting a shot off before we enter any type of uh, combat round. Oh. Okay. That was the first one and second one. Huh. I'm sorry, apologies. So, they fire off this shot, and now I'm going to roll my challenge dice. Your ship's resistance will absorb some of this, so have that number nearby, your resistance, and I'll tell you how much you'll subtract your resistance from. I had to get my D6s, they were far away. Okay. So eight stress, but you're going to subtract five. Your... Resistance is five. Great. Subtract five. Um, and then so cover dice. I don't actually know if that's is do you have cover dice marked on your ship sheet? Ear. Cover no. dice? No. That may be something in our ship build that we have never, ever had to use. So I would say take three cover dice, which will be your D6s as well, same as your challenge dice, and roll those. So every time um, you get hit with something, you're going to add your resistance to what the result of these three die will be. Okay. And that will be your shielding, basically. OK, I got a 6, 5, and 4, which is 15. OK, so you're going to count them together the same way that you count the challenge dice. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So ones and twos are one and two. So three and four is nothing. Two. Five. Yeah, okay. I got a five and a six, so it's two, right? Yes. Yeah, great. So two plus your resistance is seven. Mm -hmm. So stress is only one. Great. All right. So you'll remove one from your shielding based on that stress. Okay. Okay, what are your shields at now? 11. Okay, I'll keep track as well. Borku shields. Okay. So the Borku, this, it takes this shot pretty well. You have a great ship. It's sturdy. And you were able to absorb mo much of the shock. Would you like to give any message to your crew on the ship? Any directive? Are shields always up all the time? Or can I have like more defense systems in place now? Well, you can call up to the ship to pump the shields to the max. I mean, you rolled as if the shields were at max though. So narratively, yes, you can totally tell them 
you know, all hands on deck, red alert, that kind of thing. And yeah, uh, red alert. And also, can we, uh, what's the word? Go invisible. <laughs> what's that called again? Cloak? Yeah. Yeah, can we cloak? Yes, that costs three power, which I believe you have full power. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, uh, I want to cloak and like get away from this so that the people on ship are not affected because there's no commanding crew right now on the ship. Um, so, I'm thinking D&D &D rules, disengage, opportunity attack. Um, I was going to have you roll initiative right after this. So let's do that first. And if the Borku rolls high enough in initiative that they can decloak and get away, that can be their action. If not, they're going to have to mm -hmm. stay until they can. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Captain, would it be wise to have a senior officer return to the ship? Uh, I mean, that would be great. Who is available to go right now? Y'all, I'm fighting for my life down here. I need a little bit of support. You can also, um, narratively, you all can be there with Edaj, but you, mechanically, you can be rolling for the ship. If, if you'd like to you know, play it that way. But it's up to you. I'll stay with you, Captain. It will be an honor to die with you in the glorious battle. We're not going to die. Just cal calm down. We're not going to die yet. Chill. I just want people next to me. Don't die. Uh, uh, what is the status of uh, Raga? Is it, have we taken it over yet? Last you heard it was disabled. Uh... I would love for Dewa to return to the ship, but I don't know what the current status of everything is. Yeah, I'm going to keep my planet side people with me, and I'm going to leave up to Dewa and Kotar to decide how they can distribute their resources as needed between uh, the Borku and the Raga. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Uh, do you want me to roll the d20 for initiation? Yes. <laughs> I get a 13. You rolled higher than I did, so your crew goes first. So we'll do it like this, since we have so many pieces in play. We'll do ground level, and then the Raga, and then the ships in orbit, the other ships in orbit. So ground level, Raga... In terms of locations of our battles that were the order of the locations. Ground level Raka and then orbit. Your side will have initiative. So that means you have initiative okay. on the ground. And that's where our first round of combat will happen. Um, can I clarify? Did we set this up as a one-on-one -on -one between me and Dagor? Sounds that like is they didn't agree to that. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't verbally agree to that. So as you start fighting, we'll see what they do. Okay, I'm going to aim my attacks exclusively at Degore because that's how I want to keep it mm -hmm. as a one-to-one. -one. So I'm going to... Uh, is there anything that Klingons do to start battle of like a showy... Is a showy, showy thing? Yeah, there's war cry, there's war chants, war songs. Oh, you can actually make it whatever you want, whatever your Klingon does. All right. Yeah. A war song. All right. Uh, I am going to... <laughs> I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump on a rock or any sort of elevated surface nearby and start singing um, a old Klingon battle opera song that everyone should know because everyone knows Klingon opera. And just uh, start like low and just start like chanting the words out, just speaking them and then start elevating my voice into song so that everyone knows exactly what is happening in this battle. And all of it is being directed at Dagor, solely Dagor. And I'm going to cap all of this off by saying, I challenge you in a one-to-one -one battle to the death. Uh, and my action is going to be uh, jumping from my rock thing uh, with um, my dick talk and aiming to stab him in the belly. 
All right. Great. So we're doing a pose roll. Oh, um, am I rolling for daring and like security as per usual? Daring and medicine because you're but, using your dicta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dagor. Daring. Okay. Okay. Um, remind me, folks, everyone at the table, when we've done hand-to-hand -hand combat in the past, I think I ruled that it was the difficulty. I just set one difficulty, right, for the whole, all the combats. I don't change the difficulties. Yeah, difficulties for melee is always just one. And then, and I think that's only important for momentum because you still have to say who yeah. wins. Right, okay. I know I've made it a different amount because of extenuating circumstances before. But um, yeah, I will, let's, we'll keep it at difficulty one for this. Um, Dagor got three, uh, two successes. I also got two successes. Okay, so it's a tie. Okay. So I'm going to rule just for today since we have so much combat. Ties won't roll challenge dice just to make this move along a little faster. Uh -huh. But narratively, what happens? Tell me what what you do. Um, After I do this, uh, I try and, and throw myself at him with my dick talk, um, aiming for uh, like the side of his belly. But um, it he counters because he knows after this very long windup that I'm going to attack him. So, <laughs> yes. uh, He's had I a lot of time. Have, yeah, it was a very long ramp up to me <laughs> attacking him. So uh, I think he knows and he counters my first move, but I think I'm trying to set up that it's going to be just him and I. So even though I don't injure him, it's solely just us making eye contact this whole time. Great. Okay. And next is his turn. And he, yeah, he- Do we gain that momentum? Sorry. Yep, you gain a momentum. Great. He's going to, he slides out of the way uh, with a kind of grace that you weren't expecting from this gruff Klingon. And he kind of swirls around with his mechleth and then takes a swipe at you. So we're gonna do another opposed roll. Uh, can I use a, you know, I'm just gonna say, yeah, I'm just gonna roll. Go for it. You got three successes. The hell? I got two. <laughs> <laughs> so he lands a swipe across your, uh, he manages to like slice through your armor right here. Mm -hmm. Drawing a little bit of blood perhaps. And let me have him roll damage. That sounds like so many die, Eliza. <laughs> I mean, it's not that many. One, two. <laughs> uh, so that was three. You also have a resistance for your character. Yeah, I have Brakul. Mm -hmm. uh, two resistance against non lethal attacks. So right. I guess only one damage. Yeah. Yes. And we'll say that non-lethal attacks is everything except that for that killing blow. We'll, yeah. we'll say that that's what it is for this, for the purposes of this. Okay. Okay. Next, we are going up to the Raga. Kotar, you are facing off with Polk, the tall woman first officer of the Raga. She's sneering at you disgusted that you would try to take over her ship especially with all of her crew around her <laughs> outnumbered and Dua, just so you also understand what's happening around you you are flanked by the becks in their engineering reactor pit and so you're kind of like flanked by uh there's about seven of them in the room right at this moment. And of course, this, there's others all around the ship. Kotar, Poke looks at you and says, 
You think you can take me and my entire crew? Believe you're muted still. Is that it? Is that all that they say? They don't yeah. they just try to do that. Yeah. Can I start the fight now? Yep. I want to kick her very hard in the knee. And then I want to use um uh I want to maintain initiative and then I want to use killer instinct so that I don't have to use anything when I make a lethal attack and I want to stab her in the chest. Whoo, nice. <laughs> so the first one you will have to roll for. Okay. <laughs> and is the killer instinct based on success, uh, a previous success? No. Or just, oh, great. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. By the way, when I kick in the knee, I'm going forward. So the knee snaps the other way. I'm not kicking on the side. I'm trying to oh. kick. Right? The knee goes like this. I want to kick it that way. Got it. <laughs> just to be clear. Okay. Full flamingo. Full flamingo. Exactly. Ooh. She got four successes. Yeah, I never need to hear that description again. <laughs> <laughs> How many, uh, was that eight? Uh, hold on, you have to roll for the kick first. Roll for the kick? Yeah, because you're doing, it sounded like you had one attack, the kick, yeah. and then for your second, you're you're gaining, you're like- Can I also use a focus here? Action. Yep, absolutely. All right, I have hand-to-hand -hand combat, so I'm gonna oh, use yeah. that on this. Oh yeah. So uh, what's the focus do again? Is that give me one? That automatically well, if you roll at your security number or lower, you'll get uh -huh. two successes. Right, 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 right. Forgot. I also want to point something out really fast that we've possibly looked over slash maybe forgotten because we haven't used it in a while. But we all have the Rustai, which uh, mm -hmm. allows whenever we assist each other for somebody to re-roll a die. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever we do Rustai is an optional talent for us. Yeah. So we it don't is an optional. It. We don't all have it, but no, those of us who have it, we, you we all, all have, have it. Have it? Yeah, yeah, we have it because of our of our um, when when we did the thing, we all got it. Whoa. Yeah, you all got it automatically for free when you uh, joined the House of Kivik. Do yeah. off the free so to drop that if you want to. So yeah. assisting, yeah, great. So assisting will get you a free reroll. Was it? So the character oh. offering assistance may reroll their die. So if I assist you in any way, or you assist me in any way, and we fail, we can reroll our die. Oh, the assistant can yep. reroll. Okay. All right. So are you rolling? How many die are you rolling right now? Uh, I believe six because this is the hand-to-hand -hand combat one, right? But first roll your 2d20. Okay. Yeah. So um, keep that roll if you, that that was your, um, your like damage roll. So you can keep yeah. that. But now roll your uh, d20 first to see. Okay. Because she got four. We have one so momentum if you want to use it. I'm good. I got a five and a 10. So that means... You use your focus. What's your, your security rating? It's probably five. five. Yeah. So you got three successes. I'm guessing um, your target number was probably over let 10. Me, let me re-roll the five, right? I mean, re-roll the 10, right? No, is no, no, because the 10 is still good, your, probably. It's still one, right? Because it's yeah. fitness plus. Sure. Well, but she got, okay, so here's the deal. She got four successes. She got two okay. crits, basically, okay. with her focus. You got three successes. So you could use, actually, I don't think you have a reroll because you weren't assisting anyone and you don't have a reroll right now. What do the now. values do? Your value, you, uh, let's see. I'm going to say that you have to do that before you roll. Okay. If I you want to spend your value to get an automatic crit, you have to do that before the roll. So you know for next time, it's all good. Okay. Okay. Um... So now, uh, so she won that round, but you can still use your quick to action. She's going to roll damage. Okay. Then I did succeed you, in the you're... kick, but I'm still going to stab her. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and you don't have to roll for that, right? Because of your killer instinct. Yes. Okay. Great. So go ahead. Now you can roll your damage and she will also roll damage. So... I would, what weapon do I have on me? Because I was not obviously here for that episode. So don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you can decide now. I, yeah, want you the big one. I feel like I always have the big one on me. So I want to use that. I would say your character <laughs> has established a history of carrying your bat left. <laughs> okay. All right. That's eight. Points. So we're going to do six, five, two. 
Okay. Six, five, two. Okay. So we're 13, 15, 16, 17, 18. You're doing challenge die style, right? Yeah, so ones and, ones and twos are one and two. Three and four don't count for anything. Five and six count for one. I uh, was not doing that, so okay. that's, on me. that's on me. That's on me. Okay, one is a crit. In your damage die, it just means one. Okay, I got a one, a five. I got two, one, five. Two, one, five, okay. Three, two threes. That's nothing. Okay. Okay. So that's six total. All right. Well, what Quincy said earlier was, if you take five in one hit, you're incapacitated, correct? And I just put six on her head, so. Yes, but she soaks some damage. She has resistance. Okay. So. All right. She doesn't get incapacitated, but she did take a lot of that damage. Okay. So uh, you certainly do miss that knee kick that you were going for. She sees you coming, skirts out of the way, but you take her by surprise by continuing your attack. And where do you stab her? You're muted, Chris. Oh, you're muted again. I'm aiming for the heart, but I guess, you know, since it's not perfect, I hit the chest blade right underneath. All right, that's where you hit. Okay, drawing blood and she sees, snarls at you again. Okay, and now you had the initiative on that. You got your two turns because of quick to action. Now she's going to make an attack. Um, she has a, a fighting style that's kind of, well, actually, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to give you <laughs> pointers on how to fight her. Uh, let's just see how she does. So you're going to defend on this as well. Um, she does get lower and tries to go for your middle section. She rolled really well. She got, well, uh, you're rolling two D20s now. If you'd like to buy more, I'm not sure if you still have momentum, but if you do, you can buy more if you would like. Do we have momentum? Do we know that team? I believe that we have one momentum that you can use to buy a die at this time, but I don't know if you can, can you use it for defense rolls? I don't remember. I'm going to say you can. Today, cool. you can. Let's so do yes. this just in case. I'm going to so We currently have one momentum. And I'm using it. Cool. All right. No momentum. My momentum. We'll get more. Yeah. If you yeah. roll, if Chris rolls really well, we will get more. Am I rolling first or is it easier? Because I'm on defense, right? Somewhere. So she, yeah, she already rolled. So yeah. Yeah. Those are um, what we call two twos. So we <laughs> uh, uh, got four out here. <laughs> so it's a tie when, so neither of us is gonna roll damage. Mm -hmm. And okay, and that was her turn. So she uh, misses, you're just too quick for her. She goes through your midsection, you scoot out of the way. And so the two of you are still now facing off with each other. And we're going to move down or up into orbit. So now, Jade. I'm saying Jade and not Edage. Uh, because you're going to roll for the ship. I'm sorry, I'm a orbit. ship. Okie dokie. Um, but shifting the thing, ship mode. Yes, ship mode now. Here's the thing. You did roll initiative and you got initiative for the round. So it is your turn. So what you wanted to do before you can do. Uh, as ship, as, as the Borg who, right? Whoever's yeah. on the Borg who right now. Yeah, the commanding, the, let's see, let's say it's Lieutenant Fluth. 
Oh no, boy. that's a bad Klingon name. Not Fluth. Fluth is an honorable <laughs> warrior. He works nope. very hard. No, I'm erasing that one. <laughs> uh, we call them Ruth. 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 I actually like Ruth. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Ruth okay. is, is uh, at the helm. All right. Uh, and I think my message probably got off of just like, uh defend the ship the raga is incapacitated we're fighting planet side so i assume they kind of know what's happening they, right well like they're the, the cloak didn't happen yet right this is your chance to either have that happen or not oh, that didn't happen yet right okay since you're since you have initiative now you can cloak and get away if you'd like or move a certain amount if you is, like. uh commanding officer ruth aware of like what's happening like i think i've been able to send some messages right yeah i'm gonna say you were just able to send off the message that says defend the borku the raga is disabled we're fighting mm -hmm. okay but, uh, like after this you're not really gonna be able to keep messaging and stuff right yeah you're gonna be busy <laughs> someone took a shot at us i think they get what's going on so yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think the first step was to uh, disengage from battle and cloak so that this person, Ruth, understands like what's happening and kind of take a lay of the land until uh, our personnel on the Raga can uh, contact them. So I think um, that is, is that an action of like decloaking and pulling away? Yeah, can cloak, yeah you can cloak and move. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Is so, there any yeah. possibility to fire? Well, not when you're cloaked. Okay. Uh, but that's what I want to do because this is just like Officer Ruth trying to like handle everything. Uh, let's have him just disengage and pull away and 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 cloak. Yeah, so cloak and pull away. So cloaking, spend three power from mm -hmm. your ship sheet, and then you'll be able to move, not entirely out of the area, but away. Okay, do I need a roll or anything for that? Or is that just a, that's just doable, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. You'd be able to do that. Okay. Oh, and to be that's clear, we, we did, uh, we we're at 13 power. So we're not, we're still at 13 power, right? We're not, yeah. we're yeah. not. 13, not 13 is to get the cloak started. Okay. All right. I just so wanted to. started at 16 power? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got big engines. Yeah, you do. All right. So now um, it is the Rane ship's turn. You have cloaked. They don't know where you are. So instead of shooting randomly at nothing, they're going to shoot down at the ground. Wow, they're going to the scorched earth, yeah. huh? They don't play by the Klingon rules. Wow, no honor. None. Um, let's have Omek roll for ground defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take two D twenties. Yes. And you can let's say use the Borku's ratings. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just do that. That'll be simpler. Use the Borku's rating, so you're going to use, let's say structure and security. So nine plus three is 12. That's your target. You want to roll that or under. Elise, you're going okay. for a weakest flank here. What's that? One success. OK. <laughs> Our best roller. <laughs> that was a month ago. <laughs> It's okay. always a month ago, Philip. We only play monthly. <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna... Sam, if you're out there, we need your dice Don't forget. <laughs> okay, so. And we're out of momentum, right? Yeah, we've we've nope. we've been rolling. We've been rolling pretty pretty tough ones th today. Just to build momentum, someone should roll something they're real good at, even if it's not related to the fight. <laughs> okay, so um, Philip, roll three of your challenge dice, the D6s. That'll be your cover. Uh, 
Hi, yeah, yeah. I got one five. <laughs> okay, so it's Three, one. Yeah, and that's about it. Yeah. Okay, so one five plus your resistance of five, so that's six. You're going to, so we're subtracting eight is what I rolled on the damage die, minus six. So you'll take two damage. Let me think for a second who takes it since we're changing tactics here, shooting at the ground. Um, I'm going to say they blow, they just disorient you. They blow up one of the huts nearby. And it, it dodge. I think you're going to take one. You're muted. You're muted. Okay, but am I not also standing next to Dagor and like all these other people? Like they're all going to take damage too, right? I'm saying that the hut that was blown up was on your side where you're standing. And it, the <sighs> blast of it knocks you a little bit and that disorients you. Just me? Just me? Yeah, because it was only one, so just take one. Okay. Okay. That's not going to happen every time, but it's kind of like an opportunity attack from the cloaking. They're not They're not going to keep doing that. Oh, okay. Shit. Okay. Or, well, actually, I'm not going to promise that because these people are without honor. Mm -mm. Next I'm up. hoping that works both ways. Well, that's up to y'all. <laughs> Back on the ground, Adaj facing off with Dagor. Now, because we're doing this very confusingly <laughs> with three levels of the rounds, Adaj has taken a turn, but you're the only one in combat right now, so you can take your another turn now. Mm -hmm. If that's how y'all want to stay, keeping it one-on-one -on -one combat. I would like to do something. Okay. Uh, I say... um. To the rest, to, to the other 12 dozen officers, I say, it appears that your ships above have decided to rain down its disruptor fire on here. I understand this is the way you Rene do things. So tell me, how lucky do you feel? Do you wish to stay on this ground of combat and join the fray, knowing that at any time you can die? Of course, you are not afraid to die as Klingons of honor. But is this what you wish to die and make it worth your while? Is this how you wish to enter Stovacor? On a mining planet, Vorseth, shot by friendly fire? I think perhaps that is not the most honorable way. And it doesn't matter what I think. We shall let the gates to Stovacor decide whether friendly fire of your own gangster ships count. So tell me, is it worth it to stay? Uh, and that is me trying to convince them to just be like, if you're getting shot at by your own ships, just leave. Great. It's not worth it to me. It's not worth it to you. Um, I have, and that includes, uh, I'm going to use my talent, defuse the tension, mm -hmm. which is attempt to, to persuade people to not resort to violence. And in this case, it's resorting to making them run away. Um, I also have focus in persuasion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will wait until you tell me a difficulty before I decide to <laughs> try to load anything else on there. All right. I do believe that diffuse attention does give you an extra die. Uh, yes, adds a bonus d20 to my dice pool. Great. Okay, so it's going to start off as difficult because I'm just talking through this. It starts off as difficult because of their level of loyalty to the Rane. It's very high, but they're not. It's not impossible. And I'm going to say that the friendly fire, that ground fire, is going to knock it down by one difficulty since you're referencing it. And they saw that it actually kind of took a little bit of wind out of your captain when it was closer to her. So starts at four, knocks down to three. So not impossible. I wish we had more momentum. And I don't want to burn my value now. I think I can do it at three. And I'll say, if this helps you decide anything, your I'm going to have you roll challenge dice if you succeeded this, and that will be how many you convinced to run away. Okay. Um, 
Can I take threat as momentum? Is that like us basically buying buying credit <laughs> momentum? Yeah, you give me a threat. To... Can I assist uh, uh, Ramyan in any way here with oh, this yeah. whole task? Yep. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> but yes, to answer you, you can buy you can uh, buy momentum with threat. I, I want to assist Ramyan by I. I I'm stunned by this blast, and I'm just gonna take some some of that Klingon blood and just kind of start painting my face with it in different patterns, and just kind of be like, "This doesn't phase me, bitch." <laughs> like, <laughs> and take a look at this. I'm using this as an effort to out outfit myself. So, like, I'm like, and I'm just gonna like every time he's speaking, I'm just be like, "Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah." I'm just taking that blood from my shoulder and just. Doing some face paint on there. It's okay. You. Would you say that's a command-based assist, <laughs> Eliza? Yes. I think that's presence command. It has to do with kind of an intimidation factor, also kind of backing up your officer. So yeah, presence command. Great, because okay. that lets Jade use advisor, which assists another character using command discipline. The character is being assisted, that's me, may re-roll 1d20. In which case, I don't think I'm going to re- uh, I'm going to buy that threat. I'm going to roll three. And, I get a and you get a, you actually, that actually means, Jade, you have the free reroll from Dakoth, and Brock Lul gives you a reroll because you're assisting another character. Or the Rushtai. Rushtai. Oh, sorry, Rushtai. Uh, I'm not going to use my reroll right now, though. I'm just going to roll one to yeah. help, help Ram. Yeah. yeah. So, so the Rushtai kicks in whenever. Yep. The You can keep that free reroll, though, and still have mm -hmm. a reroll now from Rushtai. Okay. If you want it. And I still get the advisory okay. roll. Anyway, let's just mm -hmm. go. I'm not going <laughs> to use the threat. Okay. This is not opposed, so it's just what you get. Jade? I got one six. I mean, I got one success, but I don't know if that matters to you. I got a six and a five, which is three on my end. All right. So that's four total. Bank that momentum. Just to make sure, the the... I got a 19 on the other end. So the, the complication range was normal, right? It was normal, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's four. Okay. So uh, challenge dice, let's have you roll your... This is like a command roll for you, right? Mm -hmm. You rolled command on this? Yes. Use your command as challenge dice. Do your command number. Great. The first time rolling challenge dice on a social thing. <laughs> uh, uh, five total. I got a two, a one, and a two, and then the others are threes. So when you say this, and they see your captain painting her face with hot pink magenta Klingon blood from her own body and acting unfazed, five of these Rane crime members probably some of the younger ones run off and they're like, no, no, ah! <laughs> they just run off. Um, they're freaked out. So there are seven remaining, good job. And now that was your turn and now it's gonna be their turn. Do we only get one turn for us on the ground level? Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna have Degord attack you when you're not taking the turn. Just because, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that makes them seven total. Now, you had questions before as to whether they would honor this being one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, they're not. So one of the officers sees the five run off, sees your captain acting erratically, and hears you persuade their fellow crime members to run off and is incensed by this. Incensed at them and also at you. And so they're going to step up and make an attack. Um, this is gonna actually gonna be, do they use a blade? Yeah, they're gonna use a blade. They're, they're, <laughs> they're like that. Okay, so. Finally, a chance to use Chachot Meklet, the twin fang. Method the dual necklace. Ooh, you're gonna roll a uh, defense on this. 
that's only narrative. It's the same as rolling a normal mech left. Just, you Wait, know, I didn't uh, have anything special. Who are they attacking? <laughs> Myself or Ramyan? Ramyan. Okay, great. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, I do have click on bladed weapons as a focus. Otherwise, Great. it's a daring security. Do we have any momentum that we got? Do we get mo yeah. one momentum from the last one? Oh, we have three. Three. We have three total? What do we get? The Didn't we get three? Like, we got four momentum. Oh, we got four rolls, and you said the it was one to, like, come back. We got one from that last roll. I don't oh, know only one? Got, yeah. I don't know if you had any from before. Take just one, then I guess. Just one. Okay. Uh, I want to use it. I feel like it's always worth the gamble. Okay. <laughs> the good news is I got three successes. The bad news is I also rolled a 20. Lovely. Um, you beat them. Don't by act like that's not crazy. Two. <laughs> what was that? I said, don't act like that's not crazy. You dropped a 20. <laughs> Um, you bank two momentum and that 20, I'm going to keep it. Talk, what are you doing here? <laughs> so I'm going to bank that threat for later, but, um, how do you, how do you defend against this attack? And then also you can go ahead and roll damage dice because if you, yeah, do you hit back or do you just roll out of the way? What do you do? Um, what what weapon is he attacking with? A mechleth. A mechleth. So, yeah, just the hand blade, dagger. Um, okay, because I'm fighting with two mechleth. Uh, as he attacks, I assume he's just like some untrained gangster, and I've been trained in court duels, because that might come up uh, inside the council hall. So as he uh, as he swings, I'm literally calling out his move, and I'm like, overhead strike, sidestep. Uh, <laughs> First fang catch, uh, trap, second uh, second fang slash, and I'd like just I basically I'm just naming out loud the normal, the very like mundane, uh, the Klingon equivalent of kata, um, and and poses just to do it. So it's it's he swings overhead. I I simply do a sidestep, trap it while calling the move out uh, with one uh, fang, uh, and then pull that out of the way and just slash across his torso with the other one. All right. Great. Um, let's Go ahead and roll your challenge. Damage. Yeah. Um, Amyan out here Klingon splaining. <laughs> <laughs> Dual splaining. Um, we have one momentum. We have two momentum. Yeah, uh, now you have one, two. How much does the momentum add for damage stuff? Hmm. Hmm. I think you can spend a momentum to re-roll damage die. If you roll threes okay. and fours, you can spend a, a momentum, I think, to... I don't remember if it's a momentum for each roll dice you want to re-roll. Uh, I think it's one for a for a general. I think so, too, yeah. We'll, we'll say that that's what it is. Okay. Oh, here it is. I can bank momentum. I can add bonus damage. I can... Reroll damage. What is the add bonus damage? Uh, this doesn't tell me how much. It just says okay. you can do it. Okay, it might be depending on the weapon, actually. Um, anyway, I'll just roll normal damage and I'll reroll if I need to. Okay. Oh my god. Was that a good? Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Uh, I will spend one to. I can reroll. The spending lets me reroll some, right? Like I can choose which mm -hmm. one to reroll. Yeah. All right, I will do that. Spend one to re-roll. Nice. Oh my god, very nice. Okay, okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, because I rolled three effects, two twos, and a one. Okay. And so that was eleven total. Mm-hmm. And Okay. So this person one. You actually with your slash, you 
that's a lot of damage. So you actually misjudge. Uh, I'm not actually I'm not sure how much force you were trying to use, but you used a lot of force. And maybe this person misjudged how much force you were going to do to them. Your slash goes really deep and they start bleeding out on that side. He grabs his side, staggers back, just kind of in shock. You gave him a pretty, a, like a deathly wound, a mortal wound, and he staggers back. This person is out of commission. Uh, uh, just for flavor, I go, isn't that a better way to enter Stovacor than via friendly fire? And he says, yes. And he just falls back on his side and passes out. So there's now six of these crew, Degor's crew, mafia crew. Okay, so now another top of round. We are on the ground. Oh, no, we sorry. We just did the ground. We're going up to the Raga. So, Dua. Uh, so I think uh, the ship is cloaked, so I can't beam over to that ship. But the ship's in the upper atmosphere are decloaked. Um, let's see. I think what, so we can't move, we can't shoot. Um, oh goodness. Uh, the only... I have a play question. Is it possible for Dewa and Kotar to still communicate with the Borku, even if it's cloaked? Yes, you can still communicate. Okay. Yeah. Like, we're not cut off from them. I just can't get over there because it's cloaked now. So, um... But the other ships are firing their weapons right now, which means their shields are down. Can I beam over to one of their ships? Yes. So in order to do this, I'm just talking through it. Um, that would require messaging the Borku. Oh, actually, I'm no, sorry. No, you can beam from this ship uh -huh. with using their system. Uh -huh. uh, okay, let me just think through this because you disabled all their systems. But I told you before we started playing, if you want to disable, uh, if you want to re-enable any systems, yeah, I'd, I'd like have to you just do a roll on that. Yeah, I'd like to like re-enable like a localized transporter, like, mm -hmm. um, like essentially site to site, basically. So, okay, yeah, I know how we're gonna do this. Um, so you're gonna, I'm gonna make it a difficult roll, but if you succeed this, you'll be able to re-enable the localized transporter and beam at, in the same roll. So it's gonna be difficult because of those two things to combine. But okay. you're gonna need assistance from Kotar for a second. <laughs> Actually, no, sorry. I forgot something narratively. Um, let's do the roll first and then I'll, uh, someone is assisting you, but you don't know who it is yet. Okay. So go ahead and do your roll. Let's see, cool. see if it's... We, do we have any momentum left or are we out of- We can have two momentum. Oh. Well, we have two two one, I think, because I used I used one momentum to reroll the damage. That's right. So you have one. okay. So uh, I would definitely like to use a momentum to buy the third die. <clears throat> what was the difficulty again? So the difficulty will be four. Four. Okay. You're getting an assist from someone. Cool. Um, is now a good time to burn a value? I feel like maybe it is. Um. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my, uh, spend my turn, uh, spend my determination uh, with the value. What challenges me strengthens me. Great. So I'm rolling 3d20. Uh, let's see. Um, electroplasma power systems as, or investigation, uh, sorry, uh, troubleshooting as a focus. Um what are some of your other ones? Systems maintenance, work field dynamics. Any uh, others? Uh, investigation and cloaking devices. Uh, start from the top again. Systems maintenance, electroplasma at, uh, power systems, cloaking devices, work field dynamics, troubleshooting, and investigation. Let's say electroplasma power systems. Okay, cool. Because if and, you can do that, you can do regular power systems, and that's what this is about. Cool. And this is uh this is a control engineering check, correct? Yes. Cool. Here we go. Difficulty four. 
I already have two successes. All right. Cool. Uh, uh, now it's seven successes. Okay. So we Dang. get your momentum from that. Yes. Uh, seven. You rolled. You have seven total. Uh, yes, seven total successes. So add one. Someone assisted you. So okay. that's eight, eight total. Total successes. Cool. Bank all of that. That's five total moments in you bank. Oh, sorry. Those difficulty four. So four. Mm -hmm. And so while you run over to the control pad, the becks near you start to go at you. But one of the becks turns and punches the one closest to you so that you have an opportunity to go to the panel and do what you need to do. Uh, they kind of turn to the back and give them like a, a very curt nod as the, as the transporter beam is <laughs> basically closing around them. And do I recognize them? You don't recognize them, but as you give that nod, they nod back at you as <laughs> Bex are now starting to turn on them and they say intelligence and wink. And then you see them just start like punching Bex around them. Okay, so you have beamed off and you beamed onto the one of the Rane ships, right? Yes. Okay. Stealthy move. Great. Gonna get inside the walls. Yes. And now I'm just gonna roll quickly. Oops. Floor dice. I'm gonna roll quickly for um this person. This intelligence. Surprise! There's a Klingon intelligence officer on board the Raga. I wonder who sent them along. I wonder who. I don't know. Do they do they pass a dodge before, like in the hall by the copy machine? <laughs> really? Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sneaky, Ramyan. Whoa, that was weird. Okay, so they're gonna take a little bit of damage. One, two, three. Oh, actually, that was a... yeah. Okay, they, they get. Uh, Kosar, you might notice this out of the corner of your eye, but they have like three Becks now jumping on them because they're like, what are you doing? Why are you helping them? And so they're going to get uh, punched a little bit. Take a little bit of damage. <laughs> okay, here we go. Then. Okay. Now. That is that round, the Raga round. And we're back up in orbit with Lieutenant Ruth. Oh boy, Ruth. Uh, so Borku is cloaked and speeding away to keep the ship safe so that we do have an avenue escape uh, after we finish up on the planet. Uh, it's not possible to fire while cloaked, right? Right. Mm. But you can... If you run it to uncloak and then shoot and then recloak, that would cost quite a lot of power. It would cost six power total. So you could uncloak and then shoot and then stay uncloaked and only spend three, but you have options as well. Is, is Officer Ruth aware of what's happening on planet side and also with Dewa? Well, um, I'm gonna say that, mm, let me think for a second. I mean, like, are we able to like know. communicate through like some sub channel of like, hey, these are the things that we're doing while we're doing them? I assume what Dewa, we have, like... we... it's good. It's all happening really fast. So yeah, Dewa... Dewa would not have had time to communicate what they were doing to anyone. Like, I think that the the next move for them is as soon as they figure out where they are in the ship, they might like try to surreptitiously communicate back and be like, hey, I'm over here. But they they went over there knowing good and well that they could possibly die mm -hmm. in this movie, but they're they're a fucking Klingon. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a, I, an easy move might be to just restore shields and power so that when we do need to get back on, that we'll be at full again. Uh, that's true, but I also feel like we're a Klingon ship and we're just gonna shoot at whatever is happening. So mm -hmm. I would feel like what I would entrust the flavor of a Borku to do is to like cloak, get away, uh, uncloak, shoot the shit out of whoever is closest to them, and then cloak again. 
that's my strategy. And I would hope that my ship is also taking on that sense of what we would do, which mm -hmm. is like, bow, 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 and then hide. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You're rolling for Lieutenant Ruth, so that's that's what you do. Yeah. Um, also, right. uh, I'm sorry if you already said this. I was uh, messaging you all, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I might have missed something you said. But um, Dewa, you can also roll for the engineer on the board coup to recover power. And yeah, I, I mean, I here, right? yeah, I have I have the um, the ship combat reference sheet up, and I can yeah, I can that's use engineering. Uh, that's yeah. a a minor action to restore to mm -hmm. like do repairs and bring the system back online. I can do so. Yeah. I can do it. Okay, uh, but Very I can possible. only do that on my turn, and it's not my turn anymore. So yeah, so uh, you'll you know we don't always play with supporting characters, but that's kind of what we're doing today. Um, so Lieutenant Ruth is your supporting character, Jade. And then the Lokat, who is your second uh, chief off, not the chief, you're the chief engineer. Your second in command in engineering, Dua, is Lokat. So you can roll for them as a support character in the Borku orbit round. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So, so that's where we are now. So would you like to restore power first or would you like to decloak and shoot? Uh, do we, how much, how much power would we be able to restore? Good question. Do we want to? right now, I think we're not down that much, right? Yeah, you're I, really down three. It's just that yeah. as every time we, decloaking doesn't take power, but recloaking does. Ah, I think you. it's wiser for us to like shoot the shit out of them first if we can. And then we can take recovery rounds after that. Great. So that's what I would suggest. Uh, right. So Ruth is on the bridge and. And like, decloak and shoot! Shoot, shoot, shoot! That's what Ruth is like. Awesome. Yeah. So yes, I'm sorry. Uh, decloaking does not cost power. I was, okay. uh, I misstated that. So you decloak and go ahead and roll for the ship weapons and security. Weapons. And who are you shooting at? Uh, how far away are they? Are, there's two ships that I'm shooting at, right? Or potentially could be um, shooting at. Like, are they at yeah, the same distance wanna... or closer by? I'm sorry, what was that last part? Are they at the same distance, distance or is, like, one closer? Oh, um, I'm going to say one is slightly closer to you, but not by much. They're mm -hmm. kind of in the same range. And you moved away. I, I said you didn't move away too far, and you didn't state otherwise. So I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm going to say you're still in range. Okay. Like, short range. Uh, I want to get the closer one, and, and I want to – can I hit them with – uh? Disruptor cannons, is that possible? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like to hit disruptor cannons with the ship closest to us. And you said that was weapons and security, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, wait. No, I don't. I roll uh, cover dice if you hit. That's what we do. I got two successes from my two rolls. Okay. And the difficulty is one as well for this ship combat. Or sorry. Nope. Oh, wait. Hold on. There's different stuff for ship combat. Okay, here's the deal. Um, ah, I'm so sorry. I made notes on this because I literally have not run ship combat before. So, uh, Lieutenant Ruth rolls control plus security. We don't have stats for oh. Ruth yet. So just roll again using, roll twice. Thanks okay. for rolling with this, you know. <laughs> Wait, what am I rolling for the Ikea's Borku? Weapons you, and Yeah, security? you already rolled for the... Weapons and security, yeah. Uh -huh. So roll that again as a second roll, but for um, Ruth, Lieutenant Ruth. Okay. Roll Actually, again. that would be there. Is there a control? Yeah, weapon security again, as if, since we don't have stats for Lieutenant Ruth. Okay, and then um, the other ships would be rolling also twice again. So could I take an extra, can I take one of the momentum for an extra roll? Yeah, okay, great. I'm going to do that then. The difficulty, this is an energy weapon, so the difficulty is two. Um, you're not further that much further away, so I'm not going to increase it for range. Okay. So well, I, you. With my extra dice that I took from momentum, I got three successes. Okay, so bank that one momentum. And... Go ahead and roll your challenge dice for the ship, which... Actually, for disruptor cannons, is a lot. Yeah, uh, I'm rolling the challenge dice. Mm -hmm. 
for the sh for oh for the, yeah, yeah for your dice. for the weapon yeah but damage okay so that mm -hmm. should be the damage dice yeah ten okay yep ten they have cover dice that they will roll. Hold on a sec. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, and, and can someone else help me calculate? Two, two, one, six, one, two, six, four, four, three. So I think that's one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. All right. <laughs> Do you want to reroll those threes and fours? We have the momentum. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm worried that you might be on one of them. Save it. Save it. Save it so I can murder this officer. Cool. I just don't want to destroy a ship that you might potentially be on because I don't know what you glorious death. <laughs> <laughs> ten damage. I'm going to ten damage. Okay, the Here ten damage. Two plus four. Six of it is soaked, so you did four damage to the ship. If we pushed one more damage, would that get us a breach? Oh, actually, you... Um, hold on. I think you already have a breach. Because... Wait, one second. System damage threshold by scale. Oh, that doesn't tell you how much a breach is. Is a breach five? It was for us oh. in, in the Clear Skies combat, but one. I don't know if... If we can do the same. It's a difference. Well, the scale is actually just to let you know: um, Are you damaged at one breach or two breaches? Are you disabled at two breaches? That's kind of what I was looking at. Um, I so believe yeah, let's that five. Five. I believe it's five. I think so it's the same as like a, a like a physical wound, but I might be wrong about that. You got two breaches. The scale is four, so you have damaged their ship. And I'm actually going to roll to see what you damaged. Um, beep, beep, beep. But yeah, that's the reason why it's potentially worth it to reroll threes and fours because if we if we have like enough damage, like we can do more damage. To the ship Three, like you that. damaged their engines. Well done. Okay, so you see underneath the ship where their reactor pit is, you see the impact of Lieutenant Ruth's shooting from the Borku. <laughs> They blow a nice big hole, two actually, or a double-sized hole <laughs> in uh, the reactor of this ship. Um, warp core breach is imminent. All right. So that was the orbit. And at this point, it's 930. We're going to take a very brief, just five-minute break to stretch our legs. When we come back, we will continue this three-leveled combat <laughs> The board coup against everyone else. So come back in five minutes. Welcome back to Blood of the Void, our penultimate episode of this campaign. We are in a three level combat, three locations, and our entire crew is engaged. We are back now with the third round of combat on the ground, ground floor, the planet of Vorseth. Now, I believe the last, what was that? Am I never fighting again? <laughs> are you, yes, you are. You're, you're on the Raga, so you're going to be the next round. Oh, my mirrors. So I believe our science officer is next up. You're the only person who hasn't had a round in combat yet. Uh, would you like to do anything or pass or? I would love to do something. Uh... Great. But I feel like scanning them would be redundant. Do do offensive science. I Can will have do to like fight. A hunting thing? Do a hunting thing and like. I'm gonna have someone? to use. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna have to use my survivalist talents or my survivalist focus uh, to uh, do something um, to catch. What is it? Four of them. There are four of them now. There are six. Left. Six of them. Mm-hmm. I think I have to catch a couple of them off guard. Okay. You know, trick them into I a was... big pit. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Trick them into a big pit. <laughs> That's right. I'll trick them. Where's the quicksand? Um, 
I think I should do so. <laughs> yeah, have have a lot of survival advantages. So I have a lot of ideas for you. You could set traps. You could just kidding. <laughs> I'm you so could dress bad. up like a targ and and like pull them away. <laughs> we we or, have enough momentum that you can create an advantage if that's what you want to do. Like actually set you up. You actually, a trap. yeah, yeah. What if I dress up like a hut and then just sit on top of them? Maybe not that. Remember, but, remember, but that, that was a call back to the. Remember when I was the wall? Oh, the oh yes, that was a call yes. back there. That's a little call back there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think I should. I should uh, definitely use my. Um, my survival and hunting uh, focuses to uh, create an offensive attack. So I'd like to use two weapons. I'd like to use my disruptor pistol as well as my dick tough to go ahead and sling one of my dick tocks in the back of where the, the, the base of where the, of, of the, of the head Right where you know, because they didn't see me. One of them didn't see me. Hit one of them with my dick tie, and then with the other hand, using my disruptor pistol to maybe pick off two of them, leaving okay. three. Do you have so you want to, to act- take three separate attack actions? Yeah, you want to do three moves in one move. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you don't have something like quick to action, you can only really do one of those things. Now, oh, okay. uh, if you would like to sneak up on them. You, we can say that you peel off from the group and go back around to the side of the hut. So, you know, because they're all facing you right now. The action is happening like in the middle and no one's like, you won't get the back of anyone's head from where you're standing. That's what I'm saying. I I'll- thought they were just distracted by Captain's blood on the face. So like, okay, they're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah, but you're not on? behind them. So you're going to need to get behind them, which you can do. You can totally do with, you, you have a move and an action. So you can move, okay. sneak around. And then your action could be to get the dick tock in the back of the skull of one of them. I, and I don't want to change what you're doing at all, but I want to put out there that I said multiple times that I'm intending this to be like a one-on-one battle with me and Dagor. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the other guy there. Has sh- ah! sailed. That ship has sailed because these are these Klingons have engaged them I, in battle. I, we're so. all just it's all a big old brawl at this point. Sure. You know what? I'm just going to keep painting my face in the background. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Philip, would you like to do your stealthy move to get behind them and then tick-tock to the skull or disrupt our pistol? Uh, yeah, I'd like to do a stealthy move, then uh, use my disruptor pistol in the face. In the face? Okay. So, your stealthy move. Okay. You can move to the side and then get them in gets one of them in the face all right yes let's do it okay so this is going to be a ranged attack with your dick sock you're going to my, my roll. disruptor pistol right oh oh which one are you using then i think i'm gonna use my disruptor pistol because it okay. has more uh damage more damage good yes. call all right sounds good um i am going to make a stealthy move so this is uh fitness and Security. So the move. Your disruptor pistol is going to be control and security. Okay. All right. Start so I already you. did my move. My move is good. I'm still. Yeah, yeah you get a free move. So, um, uh, well, the difficulty I will. Hmm, 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 I'm gonna bump up the difficulty to two to account for the stealth required in this. Okay. So you need two successes for this. So start with your two d20s. Do you want to buy any? Any D20s or anything? I'm going to buy one, guys, because we have four. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Oh, man. I got two successes, uh, but then I do have a 20. Okay. Uh, um, you know. Making them 20. So here's the thing. You tied with the person you were targeting, but because of that complication, I'm going to say that they saw you. So your self move didn't work. They saw you, and now they're gonna come after you. Um, you can you you'll roll to defend this. So go ahead and roll again your two d twenties. Same thing. Um, actually, actually, fitness security. Ooh. <laughs> 
Okay, well, um, they got one success and a 20. What did you get? I got a 10 and three. I got two successes. Ooh, you, uh, were you using a focus? What are your focuses? My focus is survival, hunting. <laughs> Sorry. Sensors, <laughs> which are not. Not quite. Quite. Mm -hmm. Of you. Um, survival. I have bat lift, but I don't have that on me. Uh, okay. That's weird okay. things in space, but we're on the land, you know, we're on the planet. It's okay. You still beat the them. You, so bank your one momentum. You beat them by one. Cool. And they rolled a complication. So um, they're going to dive for you, but miss and fall face first in the dirt. And go ahead and roll. Uh, let me see. Roll your challenge die. Uh, to give them damage. How many of those should I do? Is it use use your security? Um, you weren't using a weapon. Well, you were before. Go ahead and use your weapon. You can, if you'd like to shoot at them, you can. <laughs> As they fall face first into the dirt. And that's my. Remind me, it's two d twenty or no one d twenty. So your disruptor pistol. Oh my god. You can just use that number that's there. Oh, it's seven. Great. Uh, with the base of three. So yeah, roll seven d6s. Got it, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, that was three, four. Oh, that sucks. Uh, okay. Oh, no, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Six damage. Great. So you definitely injured this person. And I'm going to say that was six damage. They are down in the dirt. And on their way past you, you got off a disruptor phaser shot on them in their leg. So now they are laying down. They're not getting up anytime soon. There are five standing left. And that's that round. Okay. Great moves, science officer. Why is my aim so off, though? I'm like right there. And I shot him in the leg. Where did you want to shoot? Huh? Where in did a you vital, shoot? vital place of his body. Then that's where you shot. That's okay. where you shot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I only will declare the location if you don't. So you can totally declare the location. Okay. All right. So now we're back in orbit. And we're in the third round, so that's back to Lieutenant Ruth. Lieutenant Ruth. I think we're on the Raga, which I think is Kotar's turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, ground. We just did ground level. That's right. So we're on the Raga. What did I just write in? Oh, yes. We're on the I'll Raga. Go, on go. Kotar. You are facing, still facing down with Poke. What's your move? Poke did that lunge at me. Um... I want to call my value, uh, rage is my sword, my mind is its sheath, you know, to be locked in at all times. Um, I have Klingon Blade Specialist for my focus. I'm going to use that as well. I'm also going to blow two momentum to get two extra rolls. And then I want to take my Betlath, stab it down through their head, and pull the blade out. Whew, so you're going the for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you're gonna have to spend three moments if you want two extra dice, just as why. But I think you have right. okay with that. Yeah, we have four momentum. Go for it. Okay. I'm gonna do that. All right, she's gonna spend threat to get an extra die because she sees the fury in your face and knows this is gonna be hard to defend against. Ooh. No. Ooh that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's a one. I got four plus a one. So you got six. She got five. Bank one momentum. Call it a day, kids! <laughs> Wait, what, was the, what was the difficulty? Difficulty is going to be one for all of these. So do we bank a bunch of momentum? No. I think it's no, only the difference, well. right? The they difference. Depend the five. So it's the difference. Yeah, difficulty is just whether either side succeeds, whether anyone succeeds, and then 
the, the difference is the momentum. Uh, I think that's how we've been doing it. So we'll continue to do it that way. So um, roll your damage and then we'll narrate. How many is the bet left? Eight? It's, what do you have on uh, your sheet? It's, it's I don't three have plus your security. Three plus security. Okay. It's so eight. Be eight. Yeah. Two, fours or nothing. Sorry, I'm pulling up the thing for the math again. One second. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Two. Okay. One in effect. I got two plus one in effect. I got a one, so that's another two. I got another one and an effect. And then I got a two, which is two more, and a three, which is nothing. Okay. So what is that? What does that leave me at? I got two effects. I got two effects. Okay. One, two. Four damage and no, six total damage and two effects. Okay, is the the effects included in the six, or is that on top of the six? I think that's included in the six. Because okay. two of those, two of them are effects. Got One it. of those effects, and then I have four just normal points. Okay, you were going for a killing blow, and she, you didn't quite knock off enough damage for that, but you did succeed, so you do wound her. And with six, that's definitely going to injure her. So... How much health this person got? She's a she's a major NPC. They don't go down easy. Oh, and she also soaked one, so she actually only took five. But yeah, she's looking pretty. Rough. At least cut an eye out. I got at least give me an eye. I mean, <laughs> if that's what you declare you want to do. If I miss, I wanted to just move, but I still took. A big chunk out of this right here. Yeah, you you slash down one of her eye sockets, and she cries out in pain and fury. Um, she is not looking good at this point. She's looking really rough. Okay, and that's the Raga turn, and now we're back in orbit with Lieutenant Ruth. Uh, I'm open to input from my other senior officers if they have an opinion as well. Okay, um, so are we, uh, do we recloak yet? I don't think you have. I think you uncloaked and then got a shot off. Captain, so, I can always beam back to the IKS Borku and maybe uh, do a sensory to find a vulnerability in the ship. If you want, sure. You need me back. You're in command of that ship. That's true. I, I'm okay with that if you want to do that, Omac. With your permission. Uh, sure. Okay. So you want to beam, uh, Omac back up to the Borku? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, usually you do have to roll for transporting, but honestly, we're rolling for so much stuff. I'm just going to say you successfully transport. Uh, you um, So narratively, we'll say that you verbally just shouted that to each other on the ground. Omek, you message up to the Lieutenant Ruth to beam you up. And they do that. And now I'll give you an action on... The ship. What would you like to do? You could just say like I'm an inch shorter when I got beamed back. Use that as the kind of like a, to make it fair. You know? <laughs> like, you know, still got a lot of body parts and stuff. To do a uh, sensor roll to find a vulnerability in All one right. of these ships. All right. Awesome. Okay. Wow. Difficulty will be two. But it's a straight sensor roll with the... Uh, the ship assisting. So if someone could roll sensor science for the ship in addition to Philip rolling for Omic. I'll do it. Yeah, I can roll sensor science. 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And mine is a reason science, right? Correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Difficulty two. He's back. He's back, guys. Yes. High roller. Um, two successes. Or low roller. Low roller. <laughs> two successes. Okay. Bank, bank that one momentum. Four total, it looks like. All right. And so, Omek, you do your sensor scan just immediately as soon as you beam back on, you're at your sensor station. Make a beeline for it. The other Becks on the bridge say, Lieutenant Omek on the bridge. And Lieutenant Ruth stands up from the center chair as well um, and kind of offers it to you if you want to move there. But you first, you're doing your scan. You do your scan and What is the vulnerability that you find? Uh, which system, let's say, which system would you like to target or find a vulnerability in? Something would be like the warp core. I, yes, I was going to say the weapons. The, the warp core, because maybe the hollow inducer is causing the impulse of a sensor net. And if not, then maybe it's just the trans warp conduit. Yeah. You know, that damage it took before, one of the ships took damage from the Borku before, and that's what's happening on that one, that hollow stuff you just said. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Yeah. So Somewhere, Dewa is in pain. <laughs> they're, they're, they're in pain. They can feel, like, they could, there's this energy that they feel on the ship, and they just go, oh, Mac. <laughs> um, and... So one of them is what your sensor scan reveals is what you just what you just told us. That's on the ship that already took damage from the Borku. The other ship has untouched so far, so it has full shields. But the one that and that the one with full shields is also actually no. Hmm. When Dua transported, they hadn't taken any damage anyway. So okay, we'll just keep it that way. Dua transported to the one with full shields. Uh, the one. I wouldn't have been able to transport to the one with shields because they were up. Yeah, so we'll fudge this and say that the shields were down when you transported because it took damage. So you're on the damaged one. Um, but the good thing is that was Philip's round or Philip's turn in this round. And now, Dua, you're on. You can take your turn now to see yeah, what you're I doing. Because I moved into a different initiative role, yeah. Yeah, so this is um, your turn for Locat. Uh, okay. Is that right? No, sorry. Yeah, do oh, for, no, for, for Dua. You, because for Dua turn. beamed over. I'm sorry. I'm right. This is, cool. You're fine. You're fine. Keep it uh, up. So, Keep yeah, up. I mean, yeah. knowing that uh, I, I beam on, the ship takes a bunch of damage. I, I believe that Dua understands the ship well enough to know that things aren't looking great for this particular ship. Um, so I think that the move is to get as close to one of the main, uh, uh, like areas of operation, engineering, the bridge, whatever it is, um, they are going to attempt to basically commandeer the ship insofar as like, they are yelling, um, your only hope is to get off this ship and surrender to the IKS Borku and her crew. If you resist, you will die. Traitors, dishonored, and your bodies will not be found in Stovacor. Okay. I like that move. Okay, so... Um, it is not a move for which they're particularly equipped, but they're going to try it anyway. All right, and I, am I getting this right that it's a presence of command that you're? Trying yeah, to they're do? they're basically going for like a presence command kind of. Deal. All right, yeah. Difficulty is going to be three. Cool. Uh, I would like to buy a die, please, if that is all right. How much momentum do we have? Four. Is it all right Back. if I buy two die? No. So we are down to four after that first die buy. 
All right, can I buy two? Uh, can I spend two more to buy a, a fourth? I'm okay with that. Yeah, this is not a, a, a strong roll for me, so I need all the help I can get. So we're down to two. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, I only got two successes. Okay. I did not succeed. Okay. So you're shouting in the halls of this now damaged battle cruiser, Bird of Prey. And it's chaos. So no one really is paying attention to you, which may be a good thing for now because you're clearly wearing armor that is not of this ship and them not noticing you yeah, might be i guess i just continue to make my way towards the bridge okay and we can say that you're at the bridge on your next turn um okay. uh now i realized that i gave this orbit round two turns i think because omec moved so that was technically this round so i'm actually going to have the two ships both fire just to make up for that they're both firing on the Borku because it is now undecloaked. Okay. And um, difficulty is one, so that, and then one, one, two. Okay, they both hit the, Bor the Borku. I'm gonna roll damage. And for the Borku, Jade, please roll Three cover. cover dice, exactly, yeah. And rolling it twice, right? For each um, hit? Yeah, because they're hitting in different areas. Mm -hmm. So one was one and the other one's four. Okay. So the first one did seven damage, and then the second one did one, two, five. I'm going to spend a threat to reroll some damage. OK, that was the same. All right. Um, so the first one did seven. So you can subtract whatever your first roll was. Resistance is five plus one is six. So it's only one damage, right? OK, yep. The second one did five damage. Um, minus five, and we also had four, so that did zero damage. Okay. So the Borku is holding strong. And that is the orbit turn. So back on the ground level. Adaj, a lot of stuff has been happening around you. You've seen several of the crew of Dagor's ship run off freaked out one is in the dirt because of omic that amyan faced off against another one who's also in the dirt on on their side but you are facing down with dagor he is as steely as he was before he is unfazed by everything going on here mm -hmm. so you have initiative uh i want to and i think last i would i like jumped back from when he tried to attack me so i'd like to somersault close to him and try and aim for one of the major major veins in his thighs. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing like a sort of upward upper thigh groin stab into the femoral order, artery. All right. um, that's what I'd like to shoot for. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm also going to take one of my determination points here because I think this is like me trying to land like a death blow or something close to it. Uh, and so the value I'm going to choose is if no good opportunity presents itself, break the door and take it yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to like try and stay low and land an upward thigh blow here. Okay. Uh, and I'm also going to take, um, so that should give me one, uh, two, or one crit, right? And then I'm also going to take yep. a momentum for an extra die roll as well. So I All should right. have three mm -hmm. rolls at this point plus my crit. Let me see. Okay. Uh, I got a three, which I think is within my space for blades. So that should also be a crit, right? Um, so that's 
four so far. Yep. Five. And six. So I should have... Wait, that oh, was I haven't three. rolled yet. You have how many total? Seven. Oh, well, he did not roll well. You got... Actually, he didn't did he get any successes. Um... He got no successes. <laughs> okay. So I got seven. So I think we're full up on momentum. Full right? up on momentum. So I'm just going to pull all that back here. Now, oh, I think. Full up with a bunch of floating so we could create advantages and stuff like that. We got. Yeah. You can use your floating momentum for bonus die. Okay. I mean, sorry, for bonus damage. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. I've. We're in the moment, so I'm just going to say that. I think there is a rule with that, and I'll go back and read it later. But, yeah. Do I get, like, one extra die with that? Let's do that. Okay. So I get seven. Where'd all my die go? I threw them somewhere. They fell? Are they floor die oh, now? No, they're um they're hidden die because I had so many of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Rolling all those D6s. Two, four, six. Seven. Okay. Out of my way. Okay. So I got a two, 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 one, one, five, three. So the uh, nine, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine plus one effect. Okay. So that is quite a lot of damage. Um, I mean, I was trying to kill him with this roll. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What was the total again? Nine plus nine one plus one effect. Okay. So and I also have my usual effect too of uh, don't I usually have an effect? Vicious. Yeah. So with that vicious, that's what gets the artery, and you cleanly sever that artery in his thigh, in his femur. He staggers down and back. Um, he's on his butt now. You've knocked him down, gushing blood out of his thigh. He's still alert, still alive, but he's he's struggling. He took a big blow here. Is he out at all? Like, is he down? He's down, but he's not completely out. Let me ask. I don't know if this is possible, mm -hmm. but you tell me. Can I go over and try and stop the bleeding and tell his like other officers I can save his life if I so choose? Yeah, I mean, you just did your action. If you want to move towards him with the thought when it comes back around to save his life, you can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna say well, I'm gonna just to show like my medical uh, like. I, I know I have med gear on me. So I'm just be like, I can save his life gotcha. if, if you so choose me. If you so choose. So you say that after you femur, you attack the femur, he falls uh -huh. over gushing. You say that. He looks up at you and he says, Never. And it's now his turn, but he's down, so he's gonna lose his turn. All right. Okay. Now back on the Raga, Kotar. It's just you here. So now it is your turn on the Raga. Your opponent, Poke, is not looking good. You have gashed down one of her eye sockets. She's bleeding profusely from her face. She looks disoriented. The other eye is still somehow open, looking at you, somehow staring straight at you, but she's staggering. And it's not going to take much, you sense, to take her out. What would you like to do? Take out my gun and shoot her in the face, in the other eye. Okay, okay. you take out your disruptor pistol? Yeah. And shoot. Okay, go f go ahead and roll that. I also have uh, focused composure, so I don't miss my shot. Okay, okay. So that's one. That's two. 
You got two successes? Yeah. Do you, you want to use any momentum? <laughs> yeah. How much do we have? Full? You have well, a lot two. of momentum. Then, yeah, so let me, much. Let me we buy have two overspill. More. I want to buy two more. Even though you already rolled, I'm going to let you buy two more. Thank you. I didn't know that we had momentum left. I thought we okay. We have so Wait, much. Jake got a gajillion. Okay. So that's three. I was, just think, I was just thinking about how to kill this person, and I'll be honest, I was a little zoned out. I was like, how is the most interesting death? But anyway, I'm going to buy two more. <laughs> so you're spending three to buy two yeah. more die. Yes. Okay. Two, baby! You'd love that to will do it. it. Um, she got three successes and you got four. Yeah. So you earned back one of those momentum. Dope. And I mean, you're, you have so much momentum. You're way over now. Go ahead and roll. Actually, don't even roll your challenge dice. How do you finish off poke? I want to shoot them in the face and then turn around and look at the rest of her crew and be like, are we done? <laughs> you do that. She keels <laughs> over dead. And they are, there's a mixture of half of them attacking the intelligence officer who has revealed themselves and the others run to other parts of the ship to let them know what's going on. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's the end of my turn, right? I can't do anything else. You can start to move somewhere. Where would you, if you'd like to go somewhere? I want to go uh, to the, to help the Intel person. All right, cool. I just yeah. want to dive in and grab two by the collar. Great. You do that. Okay. And we will pick back up when we get back around to the round. So that was the Raga. Okay, so back in orbit. Omek, Dewa, and Lieutenant Ruth are in action here. So I actually am going to give, let's see, Dewa is on. I'm, I'm going to purposefully add an action here because you're on two different ships. Dewa. What do you do on the Rane ship? Um, I I need to get to the bridge to disable their captain. Um, I believe you had already been heading there. So let's say you got there. Yeah. Now. So in the chaos of everything that's going on, I would very much like to try and, and take out their... Is there an engineering station on this bridge? Because I feel like it's easier for me to go for the thing I'm good at than attempt to do the thing I'm not great at, which is there, combat. So mm. there, let's say yes, there is like a smaller um, limited engineering station on the bridge. But of course, the reactor pit is full access to the engineering room. There's just all okay. the engineering things. Um, you can go. You were heading I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to have the least interference is the problem. I mean, I would say the engineering, yeah. Really? You think so? There are more people in there. But, but if you say so, okay. I think then if we'll you go. bust off up onto the bridge, it's it's totally up to you, though. If you All bust right. up onto the bridge and try to just, like, push them off their station, that's going to be more noticeable than a bustling engineering room, I think. Okay. Let, let's, let, we'll, we'll try the engineering room, then. But it is chaos here. They've They've been damaged. They're in a fight, so... It's up. It's totally up to you. Yeah, I, I think I want to do a more engineering attack on this than try to attack somebody or disable them. Like, uh, I want to like the ship is already more or less disabled because the the warp core is going offline. But I want to make sure that they can't do any more damage to the warp coup. Um, Great. So you're going for the weapons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you um, let's go ahead and say you reached the engineering room, the reactor pit. Okay. And you're going for a panel, going to yep. try to disable their weapon system. Yes. All right. This is not opposed. Cool. Difficulty um, is probably going to be, I mean, it's a similar ship to yours. It's actually smaller in scale than the Borku, but you're familiar with a lot of different systems. Difficulty is going to be two. Okay. So I can use my systems maintenance focus on this, I am guessing. Yep. Uh, I'm going to buy an extra die uh, just so that I have three. Um, and this is my control engineering. Mm -hmm. You're not oh, assisted geez. by any or anything. No floor die. Okay. Ugh. Gross. Um. Uh, that's only. That I mean, I still, I, I pass. I get two successes, but. All right. Okay. It could have been better. You could have been better. 
Well, that's all you needed to yeah. disable their weapon system very quickly. Yeah. And because of the chaos going on in, in the room, other engineers are flying back and forth. Some of them are trying to restore power to the warp core and just bolster it so it doesn't breach immediately. No one notices that you have now disabled their weapons. All right. On the Borku. On the Borku. Omek. Is Omek in command? Captain. Omek in command. I am at the helm. If you'd like, I could beam you up and then just shoot a disruptor cannon at all six of those men that are down there, including the guy that you just cut. If you'd like. If not, move a little bit to the left and I'll shoot them down for you. Uh, I I think I pretty much killed him on the last round, Omeg. So I, I know. Totally necessary at this point. There are six others there if you need. Uh, so this is happening really fast. You probably get about that much said what do you do? Omeg. Me or Omeg? Omeg, Omeg. right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to, to tell you also your options. So yes, you can beam up um, Ra'amyan and, and Adaj. You can shoot at one of the Rane ships. One is severely damaged, has an imminent warp core breach, and the other one is untouched so far and doesn't, you don't know this, but um, that one is able to shoot. And it is going to go after you. So, I mean next in the round so but the was on that ship why would Dewa I is on the damaged one mm -hmm. yeah I don't wanna... a... do you know that you don't know that but also there's a second ship that is not damaged at all so um but yeah, yeah. Decisions, decisions and if if i beam them up that's my action that's it um i beam ramyan and idaj up is that my action yeah i'm gonna say so I know I skipped beaming up before, but I feel like that's a pretty big move. So that would be your action. Because I feel like if we're all together, then we could take down the ship rather than me shooting at a ship that's shielded all by myself. And I just did a sensor and like, yeah, the shields are up, man. You know what I mean? Just saying. If you guys are okay with it. Can I beam you guys back up? I need some help. Uh, you guys can respond to because that's important to know if you want to be beamed up. Uh, I, I did what I came to do. If you want to beam me up, I feel like I don't have super choice over it because I think you're just going to do what you're going to do from the ship, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's this other ship that's... Can, you what know. does talk you can say? You, you can, talk, you can talk wants you up here. You can shoot at it to disable the shields, you know. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you guys stay down there and fight the good fight. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go ahead and try to disable these shields. Okay. Let's do so, it. difficulty is going to go up to two just because you're targeting a specific system. Mm -hmm. Um, so roll your 2d20, but you can also buy, you know, buy more if you like. I think we only have one more, right? Three more? Three. Can I get one, guys? Can I use one more? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then this is uh, reason and science. No. Uh, engineering. Do I have to use an engineering? You're shooting, so right? You're shooting, right? Yes. So you're going... You... Omek are going to roll control security and the ship is going to roll weapon security. Okay, my is bad. it better to have just some other person shoot compared to Omek then? Yeah, actually Omek since you're in command, you can do, you can command whoever is on the security station to shoot. But we yeah. uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't have stats for that. We could use Kotar stats for that. Okay, dope. Let's use Kotar stats. All right. So Kotar you're going to roll for the on Borku security officer using your control and security. The ship is going to roll weapons and security. So does that mean Phil's not rolling? Or is Ro Phil assisting? You can assist if you like, Phil. You did give a direct uh, order as a, since you're in command. Oh, yes. Kotar! We're, we're supposed to roll twice, right? 
two d20s. You will well, roll two what d20s. happens if my first one is a one? <laughs> that's a good thing i know it was a joke i thought we get it oh. there's an effect isn't it like dungeon dragons where you get like a critical if it's a bad one you don't have exploding got, dice in this i don't think i got three i got three positives i got an 11 i got 11 and one okay so, so you got three successes and yeah. then phil you can roll one die just to assist um, and then is someone rolling for the ship uh, yeah we need someone to roll yeah for i the think ship. that's a dot that's jade i shouldn't have rolled but uh yeah you get a 20 no, 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 no. I got a 14. It was okay. one over. One over. Then you're fine. <laughs> I'm you can re-roll. You are assisting. You can re-roll. Ah, you there, there you go. Uh, How's the ship doing? I I think I got a success. I got an 11, which I think is a success. For weapons and security, I think that is. Weapons security for our ship? Yeah, we have to roll under 15. We're good. Yeah. And I got an even 13. Which is a success because I have a nine and a four. I'm counting five successes. The difficulty was two, so that's three. Uh, banked momentum. Okay, Phil, you command this security this uh, security officer, weapons officer. They hit uh, the shields of the untouched Rane ship. Was that right? And you see an explosion, and now that ship's weapons are down. You successfully targeted their shields. All Shades right. are down, Captain. Okay. So, now, we're coming to the end of our session. And a few different things happen. So, on the ground, on the ground, Adaj, you stand over Dagor bleeding out from his femur, defiantly looking up at you. But he has bled so much, he's just losing strength and is not getting back up. His crew members, there's just chaos happening. Most of them have run off. Others have been standing and watching the results of the fight, that little bit of honor left in them wanting to see their senior officer, senior crime family member win. But disappointed that that's not happening, they go, some of them go back into the hut. Some of them leave. One of them kind of thinks they want to challenge you, but then backs off. And Ra'amian, same with you. You're watching this chaos as Dahor is bleeding out. Seems like things are at a standstill on the ground with you winning. <laughs> now up on the Raga, Kotar, you've killed Pok. You're heading to the bridge. Oh, sorry, no, you're not heading to the bridge. You and the in, uh, intelligence officer have taken out the rest of the Becks in the engineering room, in the reactor pit. Um, what would you like to do next? Wait, are we done on the planet side? Yep, I'm just kind of narrating through. We're gently dropping out of combat, but you can still take actions, kind of narratively wrapping this up. Um, actually, before you tell me what you'd like to do, Kotar, once all the other Becks are down on the ground, having been punched out or stabbed by you and this intelligence officer, they turn to you and they say, I'm honored to help the Borku clean up this mess. What do you want to do next? Um, I go, yeah, yeah. Do you know how to work these comms? And then I uh, tell them to open up a communication to the Borku so we can uh, figure out how to use both of these ships to take out who we have left. So I'm yes. trying to call um, Omek or Ramyang to yes. see what's going on. I can do that. I've been on undercover for months on this ship. I can do anything. They open up the comms. So go ahead and uh, who would you like to communicate to? Go ahead and do it. Ramyan. Ramyan here. Uh, ship obviously secured. What is the status of the commander and our other top officers? The commander is victorious over these pataks. Omech returned to the ship to take command there. Okay. Uh, what are next steps? Do we need to make evasive movements? Should we attack the rest of these scum? What is the move? What is the situation? There were two ships firing upon us on the ground. 
I was just in here killing someone. That's so I'm asking. I don't. I don't know what's is happening. We are on the ground. We are also <laughs> killing people. We we also do not have sensors scanning the skies. There were two ships attacking us. Are they still threatening our ships? You okay. check. Uh, you're able to check that from uh, with the help of, of this intelligence officer, and you see that one of the Rani ships is severely damaged and has taken um, is uh, having an imminent warp breach. And the other one has its shields down. Okay. Um, I'm about to take one of the ships out. I'm going to beam you up here. And we will go forward from there. To the and as you say that, just as you say that, the, the damaged Rane ship explodes. Well, look at that. I guess uh, one job is already done. Uh, we're gonna beam you up on the ship and attack this other one. If you're beaming now, me up, have Dewa have Dewa prepare repair so that we can reactivate the ship and bring it to battle. I don't think Dewa is on the ship anymore. Okay, y'all oh. don't know this. Sorry. Then contact Omek. Omek is back on uh, the Borku. If Dewa has made it back okay, there, okay, hang up. Call Omek. <laughs> okay, so you call Omek. Omek here. Omek, it's chaos here. What's happening? Where is everybody? I've secured the ship. I'm trying to blow one up, but it already blew up. Everybody's on the ground, killed all of these bums. What are we doing? I think the best decision is to beam back to the IKS Borku and let your other people there command that ship so we can shoot the other ship. I have the shields down. Well, why wouldn't both of our ships shoot that ship that has its shields down instead of me coming onto that ship after I did all of the work to secure this ship? That's a lot of alliteration, my friend. I'm <laughs> sorry, the comms. I can't understand what you're saying. Okay, uh, I'm going to shoot that shoot ship. Shoot that ship. You shoot it too. While this is happening, you get on the Borku, Omek, you get a comms from a ship that's decloaking. It is. Another battle cruiser. Actually, it's a cavort class, so it's bigger. You hear a voice first, and then you tell, I'll just say, you tell your comms officer on screen, you see a very familiar face, one that used to sit at the helm of the Borku itself. Bamir, Klingon intelligence officer and former commander of the IKS Borku, pops up on screen. And standing behind her is Dua. Ikeas Borku. What a mess has been made here. It's good to see I, you, Omek. I can't believe it's you. I good to see you as well, ex commander. <laughs> I'm uh I was I got here just in time and scanned and saw that Dua was on a ship that was imminently exploding. Let's all um, reconvene on the Borku and discuss. So we're gonna cut ahead. You all have reconvened in Edaj's ready room. All of you, Dua, Edaj, Omek, Ra'amyan, Kotar, and Bamir. Standing next to Bamir is Ra'al, the Klingon High Council member, Ra'amyan's contact, and another officer that they have introduced to you as Quiv. Uh, actually, sorry, Quiv is the Klingon intelligence officer that was on the Raga that fought alongside Kotar. So the eight of you stand around the ready room and Bamir and Ra'al relayed to you, basically saying you helped them uncover what was happening with this mine and helped take out the one of the heads of the Rane crime family, who by the way is now in custody on the Klingon intelligence ship, having been severely injured by Edaj. They tell you how Ra'al and Bemir have been covertly working on this mission to uncover who is directing this, 
Why were they directing it? Your contact with the Koth also helped them. He was able to actually ask for the help. He knew what was about to go down and he was the one who called them over. They had been not too far near, uh, not too far observing the area. And when you came aboard, came into this orbital system, they also got even closer. So this convergence of happenings was all, you all just kind of lit that final match that helped burn this part of the Rane crime family's workings down to the ground. And Ra'al says, I want to thank you, IKS Borku, for all you have done here to help us. And we now know who Antak, the dishonorable high council member was working with. And we can hold him accountable once we get testimony from, from him. And Bamir says, I am not surprised that my former crewmates were the ones to seal the deal on this mission, but I am very proud. And Ra'al says, I am very proud as well, Bamir, and I will make sure that all of you, every single one of you receives awards for your honorable actions. Edaj, you fought honorably. Thank you. Ah, uh, it felt like old times again to be fighting in that sort of combat. Ah, oh. and who thought I could do? Who would have thought I could do that while being a few months pregnant? The <laughs> mirror comes over to you and grabs your shoulders and just like. Kapla! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, pregnant with child. <gasps> uh, yep. It's uh, I didn't want to tell anyone at that time because I still I don't want anyone to stop me from fighting. Because look at your faces. You would have stopped me from fighting, wouldn't you? Huh? Mm -hmm. No, you were having honor for two. You would have to fight harder. <laughs> Honor like and with that we will end our session thank you all so much for rolling with all of this that was gnarly gnarly combat and y'all just were awesome and oh my god you fought so amazingly thank you so much to everyone who's watching if you had to leave early and watching us on vod thank you for coming back if you stayed with us thank you thank you and thank you to our mods thank you to jake we are going to be back oh i'm going to tear up oh my god i am going to tear up we're going to be back in a few weeks with our final episode of this campaign and i hope you will join us and until then kapla <laughs>